Importing in SAS has many benefits over traditional imports in CSS. SAS allows importing of CSS, SCSS, and SAS files. When importing SCSS and SAS files, we can share mixins, variables, and more between the files. This allows us to build our own library and share it across all of our projects. For this lecture, we're going to have a little bit of a different structure. Instead of the three files on the desktop, we now have a folder containing all of our files. We have three files in particular, and these files are going to be imported into the sas.sas file and the scss.scss file. And what we want to discover is how these imported files work in SAS. And you'll notice with all of these three imported files, they're different formats. We have a SAS, we have an SCSS, and we just have a standard CSS import. And then also we have the final produced CSS file from the SCSS file. But please do note the SAS.SAS file will produce exactly the same CSS file. So now let's take a look at the project. So we're starting out with the SCSS.SCSS file. And what I'd like to do is import the CSS file. So this just contains a few little styles here and there. And what I can do is import it by saying at import, then in quotation marks, single or double, I can target the CSS file. So I'm going to say import.css and then end with a semicolon. And once I save it, it will produce the code like so. And this is just standard for any CSS file when we use the at import rule. So you can see SAS doesn't mess around here. It just leaves it as is and just puts the import in there for us. Now what I'd like to do is take a look at importing something a bit more complex, such as an SCSS file. So we have this underscore main mixins.scss file, and I'll explain why I put an underscore at the beginning, and there is a reason for it. And we have a variable, we have mixins in here, such as box shadow, we have the transition mixin, we have the keyframes mixin. And also, I've commented out this little section right here, which has some styling for a div element with the class of content. We'll come round to this in just a second, but right now, let's focus on the variables and the mixins and getting this guy imported into scss.scss. So we use the same at import syntax, and then we can put in the single or double quotes and target the file underscore main mixins. Now we don't have to include the file extension when importing SAS and SCSS files. But if you omit the extension, what will happen is SAS will try to look for an SCSS or a SAS file. But in my case, I'd like to be specific and include the file extension .scss. Now let's go into the underscore main mixins.scss file and uncomment out the selector and CSS properties. Once I save this file, you will notice it will take that CSS and directly input it into the scss.scss file and then export the CSS. And the same goes for SAS files. Now that we're importing the main mixins.scss file, we can now start to share the variables and mixins that are contained within the file. So let's go back to our scss file and let's target the html root level element and then i want to say background and then set the value of this css property to the same as the value of the scss variable now i'd like to include a mixin within this css selector let's call back the box shadow mixin with a list of data being passed in once saved you'll notice the change produced in our css file I'd also like to repeat the process of calling back the transition mixin and passing in a list of data. And again, we get the same result with multiple CSS properties being exported with the list of data. Now we can come out of that CSS selector and call back the keyframes mixin, which I can pass in the name of the animation. And then also between the opening and closing parentheses, I can define the keyframes within the animation. Once saved, you'll notice it will produce the following code. 
Now let's take a look at importing the underscore import.sass file into our SCSS file. So we can see here with this SAS file, it contains variables, it contains a mixin, and also it contains a little bit of CSS. So what I'd like to do now is go to our SCSS file, type in at import, then put the quotation marks in and say underscore import dot SAS. Again, I don't have to include the file extension, but I am in this example. And then I'm going to change the background CSS property to use the primary variables value that's found in the SAS file. Then I'm also going to include the mixin that's found within the SAS file. So that will add in some properties and it requires one argument. Once I save this file, you'll notice it will include the CSS found within the SAS file. It will also include the variables value and also it will include a few CSS properties generated from the properties mixin. And there we have it. Now it's certainly true that you cannot mix the syntaxes. If you have SCSS, then that file must contain the SCSS syntax. And if you have a SAS file, it must contain the SAS syntax. However, when it comes to the importation, you can import SAS into SCSS and vice versa. It doesn't matter. You can't mix the syntaxes within the files themselves, but you can crisscross the syntaxes when it comes to SCSS and SAS when you import files. Also, we can take a look at the SAS syntax to produce the exact same CSS code. So now that we've gone ahead and taken a look at that, I very quickly just want to take a look at exporting the directory that we have on our desktop and also why I did put in that underscore before the file names that I was importing. So the reason behind the underscores at the beginning of the file names is to inform SAS that these files are partials. Partials are files that are not converted into CSS directly. Rather, partials are just used in an SCSS and SAS file like we have done to share the mixins and so on and so forth. Now what I want to do is take a look at exporting this entire directory and seeing the outcome. So I'm going to open up the terminal first of all, and we need to make sure the terminal is focused on the right directory. So I'm just going to say CD desktop. Now what I'm going to do is take a look at evoking SAS, telling it to watch the SAS import directory, and then converting it to a CSS directory with CSS files. We can also set the style option, and also we're going to set the source map to none. Once I hit return, it will create the directory and produce the CSS files within it. If we review it, we can see that two CSS files have been generated. That was from our scss.scss file and our sas.sas file. They both produce exactly the same CSS code, but you'll notice our partials were not exported to CSS. So that's why we put the underscore in there to make sure that that doesn't get exported by itself to CSS. And on top of that, you'll notice it doesn't actually copy across the CSS files. So if you wanted to include an import.css file, you need to make sure it's in the final directory when you export it out. Apart from that, that is SAS imports.